I watched the inauguration uh, as uh, I'm sure many of you did. I know many of you did not as well. Uh, What happens now? Joe Biden is officially the 46th President of the United States. I'm left with several different questions but the primary one is is Joe Biden going to fulfill his promise to be the President of all America or will we end up even more in internecine basically civil war red America, blue America? I hope that Joe Biden will govern very reasonably from the middle centrist part of the, of, of the political landscape. I'm not sure what will happen candidly and I don't think anybody really knows what will happen but I'll say the same thing about Joe Biden that I have said on every inauguration day for every president uh, as long as I have been an adult. I'm rooting for the president to do well. I would like for the president to be liked by 70% of the population. Back in the 1950s Dwight D. Eisenhower had a 90% approval rate in the United States. I think the odds of anybody being much above 50% in the long runs are low but I'm holding out optimism that maybe there can be a Ronald Reagan-like aspect to Joe Biden's presidency where he's just kind of a decent guy and he doesn't really rattle things too much one way or the other. I voted for Donald Trump. I laid out for all of you why I voted for Donald Trump. Uh, I would prefer that Donald Trump have been inaugurated for a second term today. But one of the things you have to learn is you can't allow politics to overtake your life. My business is going to be successful no matter who the president is or else I'm not doing a very good job running my business. My radio show is going to be successful no matter who the president is. My career needs to be successful no matter who the president is and so does yours. And so I feel like there are so many people out there that have become social justice warriors or the opposite and have become obsessed with politics in this social media age because they're rewarded for extreme partisan takes. And it drives people crazy because my audience has skyrocketed by me just being totally reasonable. There is such an absence of reasonableness in this country that just being a reasonable guy, a rational guy, has allowed me to actually dominate in terms of my audience. We grew more as a company than I bet any sports media company in America and that's because I'm not lecturing everybody all the time on how awful you are or how awful this person is or that person is. I'm just trying to be reasonable Uh, and I'm trying to apply precedent no matter what just like a judge would. Just like a, uh, a good Supreme Court justice would use your arguments to fulfill existing precedents and be consistent whether Republicans involved the Democrats involved and Independents involved white, black, Asian, Hispanic it doesn't matter gay, straight, male, female treat everybody the same. And it's such a radical revolutionary idea that I think there's a great demand for it and that's what I try to do with my perspective every single day. So the bigger issue here I think is what's the news going to do? Now that Donald Trump is gone and now that Donald Trump has been banned from all of his social media accounts it's hard for him to make daily news. So I suspect that there will be a massive decline in the amount of attention that people are paying to the news because the Trump show at least for now is over and it was a ratings dynamo for Fox News for MSNBC for CNN. And given the fact that COVID seems to have peaked again in the winter and now begun its decline and there are millions of people being vaccinated It's amazing to me I probably shouldn't be surprised because now we're at Inauguration Day but Democratic mayors and governors are now making the decision to open up their state. I saw today Baltimore is opening up the city of Baltimore. They announced it today literally on Inauguration Day. City of Chicago is opening back up in many ways. Uh, The state of New York is opening back up. All of these Democratic enclaves either cities or states are now suddenly coming around to the argument that I've been making since April is when lockdowns don't work and we can't shut down our economy and the overall impact if you look at the data does not in any way make us safer meanwhile you're destroying the economy. That's why I've been arguing for a long time the data supports the decisions being made by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. If you go look at their COVID numbers and compare them let's say with New York and with California not only for the number of infections and deaths per capita but also for the overall unemployment rate as well as which kids are in school and which kids are not 
Florida and Texas have been the best of the big states at handling COVID. New York has been the worst and California has been the second worst. That's data. That's not me trying to make any kind of partisan argument. That's me looking at basic data. So I hope that basic data will govern and the party that claims it cares about science will recognize that there's no scientific justification for kids not to be enrolled in person in school all over this country and that people will stand up to the school boards and the teachers unions and say if you want to be paid you got to be back to work right now. No more of this remote learning. We've destroyed a year of schooling for our kids and the kids that are going to suffer the most are the most underprivileged the kids who could afford uh, it the least and we need to get back to a form of normalcy there. Uh, So I hope that that is what will end up happening with Joe Biden. Like I said, I root for the president to be successful and to be liked by a majority of the country whether you're a Republican or Democrat. Considering he's only a one-term president I hope that Joe Biden will have the spine to make decisions not about getting reelected because I can't imagine he's going to run again at 82 uh, but about finding a way to try to uh, govern the entire country in a way that everybody benefits instead of allowing the radical left wing to take him hostage and lead us astray in that way. 